Seagull linguists have also slowly be begun to seek out the embodied foundation of linguistic structure and meaning. Recall Sandra's early comment in response to her fiancé request for a prenuptial agreement that a cool, I could stand to see our future relationship be reduced to question of money. Why is that? Why is it Sandra uses the word stand to refer to an abstract mental experience of her adjusting of her fiancé demand? Traditional studies on how people process ambiguous or polysemous words such as stand generally assume that each sense of a world, world is listed as part of its entire its entry in in the mental lexicon. For example, do people immediately access all the possible senses of the word stand with context determining which meaning is appropriate afterward or does, or does context const constrain lexical access to, so that only the correct meaning of stand is accessed during immediate utterance interpretation these empirical questions have been studied extensively physical psycholinguistics were rarely asked whether people have intuitions about why stands or any polysemous words has the variety variety of meanings it this does it does Recent studies, however, demonstrate that people institutions about the meaning of stand are shaped by their embodied experiences of standing. Those people tacitly recognize that Sandra's use of stand as has a metaphorical meaning that is related to their embodied experiences of struggling to remain physically upright when some physical force act against them. People's understanding of linguistic meanings are not divorced from their embodied experiences, but rather are fundamentally constrained by them, by them in predictable ways. Following Piaget's early writings, developmental psychology has also started to mindfully explore how how embodied actions may underline children's ac acquisition of percentual conceptual knowledge. For example, inf infants' interest in things that move assists them, assist them in understanding some cause-effects relations in the physical world. Sophisticated studies indicate that infants 12 months old and younger are capable are capable in the right settings of making casual attributions of the behavior of, of, of objects they see in the world. The infants develop developing sensitiv sensitivity to casual relations may underlie the ac acquisitions of concepts for agency. Things move because of internal forces of human intentions. These studies, however, despite their brilliance, situate the child as a passive observer who learns to reason above the phys physical world by visual inter inspec inspection of real world events. Several experiments now demonstrate the importance of the child's bodily explorations of the physical world in learning about objects in their behavior. This empirical work suggests that many basic concepts may arise from rudimentary bodily, from rudimentary bodily actions, and young children felt experiences of them. Causations and agency, for example, may be rooted in infants' phenomenological sense of their own bodies, interactions with objects and other people. Even before infants possess any ability to physically manipulate objects with their hands and feet, they directly experience cause and effects from the movement of their lips, tongues and mouths during bread, breastfeeding or from sharing food. 
which transforms into something that can be swallowed easily and a a cobra a encouraging trend in developmental physical physio psychologically psycholo psychology in great attention is given to infants infants phenomenological experience in relation to cognitive growth grow these brief examples illustrate how looking for them embodiment actions in thought and language may provide a different picture of human cognition that has traditionally been assumed within cognitive science. Much recent work in cognitive science views embodiment as a matter of brain states and neutral activity. We have indeed learned a great deal from these neuroscientific studies. However, Roger Perry noted over 65 years ago an, an objective psychologist an objective psychologist hoping to the to get an physical phys psychological side of behavior in up to plunge plunge immediately into neurology in, into neurology trying to correlate brain activity with modes of experience the results the result in many cases only accentuates the gap between the total experience and studies as studies be the psychologists, psychologists and neural and neural activity as analyzed by the neuro neurologists. But the experience of the organism or of the organisms in is integrated, organized 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 and and was its its meaning in term in terms of coordinated movement. The psychologist the psychologist Scott Kelso more recently suggested it is important to keep in mind that the brain did not involve merely to register representation of the world, rather it involved for adaptive actions and behaviors. Musculoskeletal structures coevolved co -evolved, co -evolved, co -evolved with appropriate brain structures so that the entire unit must function together in an adaptive, adaptive fashion. It is the entire system of muscles, joints and pro proprioceptive and kinesthetic functions and appropriate part of the brain that involve and function together in a unitary way. way. The brain is certainly part of an integrated dynamic system devoted to the movement be movement, embodiment and dynamics of everyday life, viewing the brain simply as an information processing or computational device as the center of cognition ignores the centrality of animate forms in human thoughts. This book describes the way that perception, concepts, mental imagery, memory, reasoning, cognitive de development, language, emotion and consciousness have to varying extents, groundings in embodiment. My strategy is exploring the signifi significance of embodiment in the study of the, these topics, adopts what may be called the embodiment premise. premise. People's subjective felt experiences of their bodies in actions provide part of the fundamental grounding for language and thought. Cognition is what occurs when the body engages the physical cultural world and must be studied in terms of the dynamical interactions between people and the environment. Human language and thought emerge from recruiting parents patterns of embodiment activity that contrast constrain ongoing intellig intelligent behavior. We must not assume cognition to be purely internal, symbolic, computational and disembodiment, but seek out the gross and undetailed ways that language and thought and thought are inextricably inextricably shaped the embodiment action. The key feature on his premise is the idea that understanding the embodiment nature of human cognition demands that researchers specifically look for possible mind body 
and language body connections, understanding and body experience is not simply a matter, it's not a simply matter of physiology or kinesiology, but demand recognition of how people dynamically move in the physical cultural world. The body exper experienced from a first person phenomenolo phenomenological perspective, the mind, its images, thoughts, representations is created from ideas that are closely related to brain representations of the body and to the body's continued activities in the real world. Fortunately, there, are, there is an accumulating body of empirical evidence showing how embodied activities shape human cognition. In the spirit of, the, of cognition science, the empirical evidence, evidence includes data collected from controlled laboratory studies, naturalistic field observations, neurophysiological case studies, linguistic research, artificial intelligence and artificial life, modeling and various phenomenological studies and reports. To be sure, many of the scholar, sh scholars who studies there are described here are many are may not entirely agree with the interpretation of their works as support for embodied cognitions. Some of these disagreements center around that what is mean what is mean be the terms embodied and embodiment. I argue that embodiment may refer to at least three levels of personhood Neur neural events neural events, the cognitive unconscious unconscious and phenomenological experience. Although amazing advances have been made in understanding neural processes since insignificant meditation have been given to people phenomenological experiences explaining many aspects of perception, cognition and language. I address this problem problem in the pages of that follow. At the same time special emphasis will be given in the following sharp captures to two important developments of incognition science. The first is the approach to cognition known as dynamical systems theory. Dynamical approaches emphasize, emphasize the temporal dimensions of cognitions and the ways in which an individual behavior emerges from interactions of brain, body and environment. Simple and complex behavioral parents are higher are the products of self-organization processes. Virtually all living organisms self-assemble or, or our self-organization systems are emerging as emergent consequences of non-linear non interaction among active, active components. Self-organized patterns of behavior emerge as stable states from the interaction of many subsystems, yet the emerging higher order behavior is also capable of slaving lower level components in such a way that behavioral patterns can often be described as be relatively few dimensions. Most of must much of the emphasis then in dynamical systems theory in in one in on the structure of space of possible behavioral trajectories and the internal and external forces complementing brain, body and world that shape these trajectories as they unfold more specifically more specifically specifically dynamical systems theory is a set of mathematical tools that can be applied to characterize different states of the system as this evolves in, in time. In this way, a dynamical view aims to describe how the body continuous interactions with the world provide for co coordinate patterns of adaptive behaviors rather than focusing on how the external world becomes represented in the inner mind. A dynamical approach rejects the idea that cognition is best understood in terms of representational content, either for neurons of part of this or the mind, 
or that cognitive systems can be decomposed into inner functional subsystems or modules. Linear decomposition of cognitive performance is functional into functional subsystems. Boxology is adequate to understand the dynamical systems that could across brain body world division. Most researchers working within a dynamical framework adopt their conserv conservative strategy of seeing how far one can go, go in explaining various behavioral data co without invoking representational explanations. Dynamical systems theory has, has had its most profound effects in cognitive science in the study of perception action relation or complain and in the development of situated and body agent or robots capable of minimally cognitive behavior. Although there is debate over whether dynamical approaches can scale up to explain higher across higher order aspects of cognition including language use and cognition consciousness. I am enthusiastic about this perspective because it directly acknowledges the interaction of an agent physical body, including its brain and nervous system, its experience of its body and the structure of the environment and social context to produce meaningfully adaptive behavior.